Okay, we just talked about generative art. Now I want to tell you what I learned when I researched and studied something called programmable art. This is a new emerging field within crypto media. It's something that crypto media enables and it is opening up the design space in the art world overall. Let's get into it. Programmable art is really just, it's another way to say it would be dynamic art. This is art that can change over time or change based on um, whatever variables you set for it. So just as a most simple example, we can think of a piece of art that displays differently during nighttime and during daytime. So this was, is like a time or a day variable and the NFT displays or the crypto media displays differently during those different times. So right now it's daytime in the New York time zone, uh, East Coast, US East Coast time zone. But um, so from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern, it's going to look like this. And then um, from 7 p.m. to 8 a.m., it looks like this. It, it has a dark background and it's trying to um, indicate nighttime, right? So this is not super interesting, but that's just an introduction as to what you can do with that's a funny picture with uh, with a dynamic piece of art. Now, um, ETH Boy is is one step more interesting because it's not using the one or zero night or, or day um, variable time. It's using the price of ETH to determine um, to determine what this artwork looks like right here. So when the price of Ethereum goes up then uh, there's probably a different background. Maybe Vitalik's wearing something when the price goes down. Maybe Vitalik starts frowning. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but um, this NFT is somehow changing based on the price of Ethereum. Okay, so that's, that is another one right here. Now let's go over to a platform called Async Art, Asynchronous Art. And this allows people to... Um, there's a, a master artwork, but it's composed of multiple layers of NFTs, right? So this is the first supper NFT right here, and this is the master, but it's made up of 22 layers that are each themselves NFTs and are therefore individually ownable. Okay, so I mean, you can probably map them like Statue of Liberty, like look at this figure right here. We can go up and, and find that it's right here, right? And then there's Vitalik that's looking like the president. Um, I think that would be this one. Is that, oh no. Hmm. Um, anyway, you get the point, right? So um, these layers compose this master and the layers are each themselves NFTs and so can be individually ownable. Now, the interesting thing is that if I own a layer, I async gives me the opportunity to change that layer in some way. I can do a form change to it. I can rotate it. I can scale it. I can make it more or less opaque. There are certain state changes that asynchronous art allows you to do on each layer. And then the master artwork is going to update according to whatever the individual layers are displaying and have been changed to. So somebody could own this master artwork, but you have potentially 22 other contributors that can be changing their state independently of one another and changing the overall master artwork. So this is just a new um, thing that uh, programmable art and crypto media allows for. Now I wanna talk about async art and the platform uh, what it allows you to do. It is specifically geared towards creating and selling these programmable art. So you've got a master artwork and then you have layers that you can sell as well. And I want to just demo something that you can do here. This is the Async Explorer. And um, so this is a, a, a painting called Elise. And I can actually demo what it looks like. So this is what Elise looks like at, I assume that's midnight. This is 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. This, this artwork is changing and it has 24 states each for each hour in the day. 
and it changes like this. So um, this is cool because uh, this is important, right? Because if you're just looking at the master, you're going to want a way to demo what the other artwork could look like if it has different states. Async has integrations with Apple TV and then something called Mural, which is like this um, digital frame that you could put up in your house and you can display digital pieces of art there. And uh, it's these types of integrations are important because you, you would want, if you do own this first supper NFT, which I'm sure is expensive, this master right here, you would actually want to be able to, um, to exhibit the, uh, its, its ability to change like with people like who visit your house and are, are checking out your artwork. So, um, it, they have an app on Apple TV and mural again, that, um, it allows for the dynamic display of these NFTs in your home, which I thought was pretty cool. Now, another really cool use case that async enables is it's not only for visual art like we've just seen, but it's right now they're doing something with music as well. So you can think of music, you can decompose a song into individual stems, right? Like there's a piano layer, there's a drum layer, there's vocal and there's synths. And on each one of these stems, you can have a different variant. So maybe this is like a, a somber piano and then this is like a, a more upbeat piano and then same with the drums, right? I'm not, I'm not a musician, so I'm not exactly sure how that would work. And then there's a master song. Okay, let, let's see if I have this set up right. So we can play this song. This is what the master currently is at, right here. Yeah. But these individual stems, let me just pause it. These individual stems are owned by individuals. And just like we talked about before, how um, I can own an individual layer of the first supper and I can change it and it changes the master. It's the exact same with this song. If I own synths, for example, then I can change it to zero, one or two variant. And then that is the variant that is then put into this song. So this is the song as it is right now, and it's stem mix of zero, 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 one. So that means zero piano, zero drums, zero vocal. Remark is creating a new NFT standard where you can have NFTs that evolve. There, there are just many different properties that these NFTs have. Every bird ha also has seven equipable slots. So this is where the new NFT standard comes in. On Ethereum right now, it's mostly just like your NFT is static. And so it's like um, it, there's not really any additional functionality like with ERC721 and ERC1155. With this new Remark NFT standard, you can have it to where your NFT can own other NFTs. It's called This is called NFT nesting, and it opens up a ton of different use cases. So like if we imagine that this bird is an in-game character in a video game, that you could equip it with other NFTs, right? Like this British flag is an NFT. This trident is an NFT. You know, like if, if you have a medieval character in a video game, you can equip it with a, a sword NFT and a shield NFT and a, an armor and all that. So this is how Remark is starting to expand the use cases of what's possible with NFTs. This is going to um, explode the design space. Like right now we're at like version 1.0 and we're starting to transition to version 2.0 of these, this new class of NFT standards, and it's just going to make everything more programmable, and um, it's going to it's going to open up the creative possibilities for people building on top of NFTs. Like I said, for the most part, right now people are uh, people building with NFTs are artists. They're minting their art into NFTs, and this is like a new way to monetize their art but you can be sure that uh, many other entrepreneurs are thinking of cool use cases. Um, and just the only thing that comes to mind right now is like the gaming sector, but there are many other use cases like um, metaverse, entertainment, AR, VR, right? Um, representing digital items as NFTs in those worlds. Identity is going to be another one, potentially data. You're going to um, represent data and data sets as NFTs or algorithms that you train on data sets or used to predict 
outcome variables on data sets, you'll, you'll actually <clears throat> represent those algorithms as NFTs, which Ocean Protocol is doing. So um, yeah, this is just really going to open up the design space. And I'm interested to see what results from this new class of NFT standard that is just being released at this point.